In this video, I would like to show you how to pump down an air conditioner unit. And what that means is all the refrigerant that's in the refrigeration system, the stuff that's in the evaporator coil, the stuff that's in the line set, all that refrigerant is pumped into the condenser unit. So into the compressor and into the condenser coil. There's various reasons why somebody would do that. Let's say they were replacing the evaporator coil or perhaps the metering device. If they're cutting open those copper refrigerant pipes, a lot of technicians prefer to pump all that refrigerant into the condenser unit while they're doing that repair. That way, there's less refrigerant that needs to be recovered. That being said, I also do want to point out that if you have a micro-channel condenser unit, those should never be pumped down. Or if you have a 410A unit, that refrigerant has higher pressures and many of the manufacturers recommend not pumping down 410A units. But anyway, let's get started. So, of course, you will need a gauge set to do the pump down so you can monitor the pressure. Some technicians put both sides on, the low side and the high side. I only put on my low side gauge. And then we're gonna need to open up the service valve caps up on top, both of them. So these are three-way valves. And let's see, okay, this one opens pretty easy. If you have to apply a lot of pressure to take these caps off, I would recommend also holding the whole valve with another wrench as you're yanking on it so it's not going to get twisted off. Last thing you want is to cause a leak. So you want to take both of these caps off because that's what you're going to use inside of here. You put a refrigeration wrench in here and this is where you're going to close off those valves. So let me take this cap off first. Once again, I'm not applying too much pressure, I'm just kind of testing it. And if it's really hard to come off, I would put another wrench on there. But these are coming off pretty easy. And then, using a refrigeration wrench, you can use an Allen wrench, but a little refrigeration wrench like this works very, very well. I always use this instead. And what you're going to want to do is front seat both of these valves. So you want to spin them in clockwise, and that's going to close the valves off. You do have to spin it in for a while before it's completely front seated but I don't want to do that quite yet. I'll leave this open for now. And when you're doing the pump down, you do have to turn the unit on. So I'm going to turn the unit on, and before I start doing this process, I'll just explain to you what I'm going to do. So this large line right here, this is our suction line. It's sucking refrigerant in, and the thin line, this is our discharge line. This is the one that's pushing refrigerant out. So after I turn the unit on, I'm gonna close this valve right here completely. So I'll front seat it, which means it'll be closed off. Refrigerant is only gonna be coming up to here. And I'll leave this open. So basically what's happening is the refrigerant is gonna be sucked into the condenser unit from the evaporator coil and from the line set. It's all gonna get sucked in, but it's not gonna come back out because this valve is closed. And then I'm gonna be paying attention to my gauge the low side gauge here. Once this hits zero, I'm gonna close this valve off as well, right away. And another thing I like to do before I start the pump down, as the unit is running when I just turn it on, I'm gonna completely front seat this, basically close it, and then I'll crack it back open. Because it takes a long time to completely close the valve. Sometimes the pump down, I mean the refrigerant gets sucked in pretty quick and you don't have enough time to close this valve off. And that's kind of bad for the compressor to keep running uh, when it's already in a vacuum, when the pressure goes down below the zero. So I like to have this more than halfway already turned in. So when I'm closing it, it doesn't take me too long. So this is gonna be almost completely closed, but it's still gonna be open. And then I'm gonna close this one completely. My pressure is gonna start to drop and I'm gonna be watching it. When it gets down to about zero, I'm gonna hit the disconnect switch this one's actually a breaker. I'm gonna turn that breaker off and turn the power off. So both of these valves will be closed and the power will get turned off. And there is one last thing I wanna point out before we get started. This unit does not have a low pressure or high pressure switch, but some units, they will have at least a low pressure switch in them. So if your unit has a low pressure switch, the easiest way to tell 
is to simply look from on top of the unit, just look from the top to the bottom and look at the copper pipes, the suction line, the discharge line going into the compressor and see if there's any pressure switches on them. If you see a pressure switch, especially on the suction line, that's gonna be your low pressure switch on the thicker line. That means you will have to bypass that in order for it to completely pump down. Otherwise that low pressure switch is gonna prevent the unit from going all the way down to zero and it'll keep shutting off the compressor on you. Also, notice that this is a scroll compressor. With a scroll compressor, you never wanna bring it down into a vacuum, which means under the zero PSI. With a scroll compressor, you really should only be getting it down to about five PSI and not much lower because that's bad for the scroll compressor. If you bring it down into a vacuum, that could actually wreck the compressor. But if you have a reciprocating compressor, those, even if you put it into a vacuum, they should be okay. But even with those, I like to just bring it down to zero PSI and leave it there. But since we have a scroll compressor here, I think I'm gonna bring the pump down to about five PSI before killing the power. So if your unit does have a pressure switch, you will need to bypass it, otherwise the compressor will turn off before it's completely pumped down. So the way to bypass it, usually there's two thermostat wires that come from inside the house and into the unit. These thinner thermostat wires go into wire nuts. It's two wires. And then those two wires, if you don't have a low pressure switch, usually both of them will just go to the contactor. I have a sure switch right here. I might actually have a video on how I replace this if you're interested. But anyways, these two wires will go to the contactor coil. But if you do have a low pressure switch or some other kind of safety switch, only one wire goes to the contactor and the other wire is in series with all those other safety switches. So from the wire nut, it would go into the low pressure switch, then the high pressure switch, and then it would go to the contactor. So basically what you would want to do is just unwire those wires or take that wire nut off. And then the wire that's coming from the house, you just put a little connector on it, spade connector and then you put that on the other side of the contactor coil to effectively bypass those pressure switches. On this unit right here, there is no pressure switches, so all I need to do now is just turn the unit on and proceed with the pump down. So now that the unit is running, let's start with our pump down. So I'm gonna start closing this first. And I think instead of closing all the way, I'm gonna stop once the compressor starts getting a little bit louder. I don't wanna put too much strain on the compressor. Okay, it started getting a little bit louder. So I'll stop there, it's like halfway in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this off. Our discharge side or the high side. Okay, that's all the way off. I'm gonna put my wrench in here, and if we look at our gauge, this should start to drop pretty quickly, pretty soon. And right when that starts to drop, there you go, starting to drop, I'm gonna start closing my low side real quick. Okay, bam. So that was not optimal. I turned it off a little bit too early, but that's okay. Because keep in mind that that's a scroll compressor. And with that compressor, you don't wanna be too close to the zero because it could wreck the motor inside of that scroll compressor. There was some refrigerant left over in the line set and the evaporator coil and that's why that's slowly climbing up. But yeah, after you have these two valves shut off, most of that refrigerant is gonna be in the condenser unit. And then after that, whatever refrigerant is left on this side, you can use a recovery machine to take the rest of that out, and then you can go ahead and do any of the repairs that need to be done. Afterwards, you do have to pressure test it and vacuum it. And then, after that's all said and done, after the repair is done, then you can go ahead and release that refrigerant and let it back into the line set. And the way you would do that is by simply opening up both of the 
service valves and just letting the refrigerant out. I like to just crack them both open first. On the discharge line, you can just hear it rushing out. Let's do this one a little bit more. And then after that, it doesn't really matter. You can just fully open both of them or fully backseat both valves back into their original position. After you opened up both valves, do give it at least a couple of minutes for the pressures inside of there to stabilize before you turn the unit on. If you have a leak detector at this point, after you're all done, it would be good to check if there's any leaks. Sometimes when you're messing with these stems, they start to leak a little bit. But luckily, in most cases, that doesn't happen unless it's a really old unit. You can also try putting on some Loctite on the inside of the caps and put it on there just to seal it off so nothing's coming out. When I took this big cap off, there was a little spurt of refrigerant that came out. So that makes me think that there might be a very, very tiny leak in here. So I don't have the Loctite right now, but I'm probably gonna get some, put it on here before I put this cap back on. So yeah, the valves are opened back up. The refrigerant is released. Then I would just put these caps back on, tighten them down good, take my gauge off, and that is it. That is how to put the unit in a pump down and then release the refrigerant out of it again. Well, and that is how to pump down an air conditioner. You probably noticed when I just closed off my valve how fast that arrow went down. The whole entire process of the pump down probably lasted less than 30 seconds. Now, if you're trying to do a pump down, and that arrow is going down really slow, and it's already like a minute, minute and a half into the pump down, there's a good chance that the valves inside of your compressor are shot, or they're really bad and they're on their way out. Unfortunately, if that's your situation, then that compressor, the only thing you could do about that is either replace the compressor or just change out the whole unit. Well, and that's all I had for you. That is how to pump down an air conditioner. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, check out this frog over here. This guy definitely has had better days.